the labor part. And we went all the way to Isaiah to get uh, that, that image. Talked about how there is a woman in Isaiah who speaks about Jerusalem. But Jerusalem here is not Jerusalem, it's, it's actually the church, the new church, depicted as Jerusalem. When she's going to have, when she gives birth to a nation, she, he says to Isaiah in 60, he says, Lift your eyes and see, your kids are coming. They're all coming to you. Uh, let's go just quick, a quick review. So we, we review this because I think this is too significant. For me, this is too significant to omit. This is part of the light ecclesiology, that, the study of the church. Light, not heavy stuff. But when you read it, it's very joyful. Where so, are we? Isaiah 16. I like this a lot because it has a lot, a lot of resonance, a lot of echoes between there and St. John Gospel. So the Gospel of St. John and Revelation are almost on the same line. <coughs> they speak the same language. So Isaiah 60 says, Shine, shine, O Jerusalem, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, darkness and gloom shall cover the earth upon the nations, but the Lord will shine on you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Kings shall come to your light, and the Gentiles to your brightness. Lift up your eyes all around, and see your children gathered together. Behold, all your sons come from afar, and your daughters shall be lifted upon their shoulders. Then you will see, fear, be amazed in your heart, because the wealth of the sea and of the nations, people shall change their course and turn to you. Herds of camels shall come to you, and the camels of Midian, etc. He's talking about all the wealth. Um, Those are the rich guys. Hmm? Those are the rich guys? The rich guys. Yeah, yeah Shiva. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to 66, The same thing, it's talking about Jerusalem again. Verse 6 and the following verses. A voice of crying from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord is fully repaying his enemies. Before she travails in labor to give birth, before the pain of birth bangs come on, she escapes it and bears a nail. <laughs> Who has heard such a thing, and who has seen anything like this? Has the earth travailed in one day, or has a nation give birth at once? For Zion travailed and give birth to her children, not one. But first he says, a male. And then he goes to say, it's a whole nation. But I raised this expectation. It's God who's saying that he raised this expectation. Yet you did not remember me. Says the Lord, behold, I do not. Do I not cause one woman to beget, but another to be sterile? Says the Lord, be glad of Jerusalem, celebrate holy days in her. All you who love her, rejoice exceedingly, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied by the breast of her consolation. So she becomes a mother, would, would have uh, liver pains. But first she starts by a man, right? But when you go back to 60, I hope you can remember these verses, because I, I want us to can dwell on them a little bit. These are images, beautiful images. Let's go back to six. So he's talking to Jerusalem as Jerusalem become fertile, giving birth. It's God who's going to do that to her. But in, ver in chapter 60, he says, let's go back to 60, it says, uh, shine. This is how it starts. Shine, shine, O Jerusalem. And then he goes, For your light is come, and the, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, darkness and gloom shall cover the earth. 
any images that have this that contrast between light and darkness. Um, creation. That's the cre it's a new creation, absolutely. But there's something like this exactly. So there's uh, that female figure that's coming to see the glory of the Lord while it's still dark. John twenty. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I was gonna say that. Eh? Yes. <laughs> I was. I was. Yes. I was that's exactly it. it. Mm -hmm. John yeah, twenty know. is the only place that he says, "Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark." That's the only place in the New Testament that talks about that darkness, and it's it's intended. It is intended because John is always echoing something from the Old Testament, and I believe he's echoing Isaiah. He's saying that she's going to have to lift her eyes and see Jesus. And when she see, sees him, she's enlightened. She's just, she saw that glory. And then as she's seeing the glory, the rest of the world is in darkness. So she's almost like that female figure that Isaiah speaks about. Shine, arise, look. So in that, in that moment, Mary Magdalene becomes the the messenger or the representative of the whole church. So she's the one to go and receive the good news. And it's always that female figure, which echoed in the past and the, in, the, in the future. It's, it's not nothing but the church. It is the church. Whether in the person of Mary Magdalene, whether in the person of St. Mary, at one point, while everybody else is living in gloom, the angel comes to St. Mary and says, Rejoice, O highly favored, Joy so full of grace, the Lord is with you. She's asking, what is this? And he says, you will be the mother of the Messiah. The Lord will live in your womb for nine months. And, and the same thing, the same message. Uh, why is it has to do with liver pains? Jesus is going to say that. That the disciples, as, the, as they represent the church, so that female figure now becomes the group of disciples in uh, chapter, in John 16. I call this prophetic images, if that makes sense. Like how the prophets speak, they speak in metaphors, images, that we kind of get it, absorb it, and let it soak a little bit in, in our hearts, and then when it comes back to our mind, it brings a lot of other information. Uh, so, for a Jewish person, when you tell them a little bit, they have a lot of background. Uh, what is the the American anthem says? I, I always got this uh, example. You say, by the 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 light of er, the light of early oh, dawn or something. Oh, oh, see, oh, say okay. what you see. Oh, can you see? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? By the dawn's early light. Okay, if I say this to somebody who doesn't know the anthem, they'll tell you, okay, what does that mean? But if I say it to somebody who knows the anthem, they have a lot of images that come with it. They you have the, the flag, flag on the pole, up at the yes, fort, the cannon. Patriotism, the cannon. The British, the war. Exactly. So yeah. all these kind of come crowding when you say things like that. So when we say the woman in labor in the Bible, there's a lot of images in the Bible, in the, in the biblically-minded person, especially the Jew, that comes crowding. It talks about it, the, the images from Isaiah about Jerusalem. Right. You know, If you have somebody from the New Testament, it comes as Mary Magdalene going to the tomb and she's she seeing Jesus. Or as Mary uh, giving birth to Christ. So what, what did Jesus say that has to spark this? Uh, in chapter 16, he says uh, in, in verse 20, he says, Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Then immediately he says, A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow. 
So who is the woman in labor? Church. The disciples, the church in that first family, the first the disciples come together, become the woman in labor. <coughs> um, but who is that will be born? What are they are in labor for? Now that leads you to understand a little bit more. To God's way of thinking, the birth of the death of Christ and his resurrection is a and is a birth. He's going to be born. Well, the woman is the city, and, and uh, what are being born are new people. Right. That's how you think of In the Isaiah imagery. In this, Jesus is saying, because I'm leaving you, and I told you I'm going to leave you, you act like a woman in labor. Like you feel like you're sorrowful, but it seems like your sorrow is hopeless. Right? When, when a woman is in labor, she has hope, because she's going to get through, and then she's going to accomplish something. But they think they're not going to accomplish anything. He's saying to them, no, this is, this is going to be good for you because if I go, you will have me resurrected. And once I'm resurrected, it's almost like labor banks. Like the baby goes through the, the, the exit and it goes through the exit and it's like a tight thing and it's a lot of struggle. And as it goes out, it's a new life. Something happening that, it, that, that the baby would enjoy, start to experience things. <clears throat> so that's the same thing for them. As Jesus is going through the cross, they feel so sorrowful. He's going through the, the passage, and they are thinking it's hopeless. He's going to leave us. But he says, no, I'm coming back, and when I'm coming back, you would feel like you have been in labor and give birth. That's the male that will rule the nations. Jesus comes back to the disciples and says to them, every power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and reach the gospel to all nations and teach them that Jesus is crucified, died, and risen. So this is the message they carry. Um, so that is the image of the woman. So why there is a, a moon under her feet in, in Revelation, in that image? Thanks. Right. We said the moon in the imagery of the Bible is a reflection or reflects made to reflect the sun. The sun cannot be enjoyed by looking at the desk except maybe at sunset and briefly even. Can't really look at it carefully for hours. But the moon, like Robert said, the, the moon was beautiful to look at. You can actually look at it the whole night if you want until it sits down. So the moon is a reflection of the sun. It gives us the light of the sun in an object in the sky that we can see and enjoy. And people wait for it sometimes. So what is that moon that reflects to us the unseen, glorious object? So that, that's the sun reflecting to us the glory of the, the invisible Father that we could not see, we cannot see. And that's why the St. John in his Gospel says, God has never been seen at any time. The only begotten Son, He had told us, He had revealed Him to us. And then, why is it full moon? Because full moon is the time of Passover. And why the full moon has to be the time of the Passover? So if Jesus reflects the Father, He reflects Him partially, until He reaches the fullness of reflection with all this power, when is that going to be? When is Jesus reflecting to us the love of the Father with full power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the cross, right? So on the cross, Jesus tells us that this is how God loves the world, that He gives His Son. And that's how He reflects the glory of the Father fully. And, and the Father ex chose that His reflection of love will be the cross of His Son. And then, what is the Son that is... It says she's robed in the Son. That the woman is robed in the Son. Divinity? It is the divinity. It is the divinity. See, in the Gregorian liturgy, it says, when you were ascending to the to heavens, you have filled all with your divinity. That the divinity of Christ was was actually permeating the disciples because they were open to him. As he sits there, he was in them. He just gave himself to them. And and you can see this in the gift of his body and blood too. And then uh, why this? Why the moon is at the feet? Because that's the night he, he washed, washed 
their, their feet. feet. With his own body, he went down under their feet and he will wash them. And then uh, what are the 12 stars around the head? Twelve That's the 12 apostles. Twelve apostles. Apostles. That's the 12 apostles. Okay, so that's how the sign is given. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with a child, she cried out in labor. That's the apostles in labor. And in pain to give birth. Now we come to the second sign. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems or crowns on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. The rest of the shepherds. A war broke out in heaven after that. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard the loud voice lay, saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. To the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell on them. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and a times and times and half time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, and he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So who is the dragon now? He spelled it out. You didn't need to kind of guess that one. Yeah. It's the devil because he said it in verse um, um, 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of all called the devil and Satan. Of course he has... Uh he has lots of he heads and lots of horns, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes you wonder about, you know, uh, world powers, world nations and stuff. But, you know, then you move on and then it's, oh, it's him, the name. But, you know, the imagery is, right. is kind of off on the side, you know. Why, why all that plurality? In, in a person, right? Yeah. I guess you can go to the next chapter and then we will see something about his beast. If you go just further, one chapter with me and let's see the beast. And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horn, horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now that beast, the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Mm -hmm. What does he look like, the beast? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how to, I don't know the key to unlock this. It's either, either my imagination, but then, you know, it could be, it could be like just uh, numerology, and you, you know, you substitute numbers for adjectives. 
you know. Could be. Yeah. But I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is that the, there is a, uh, a great similarity between the dragon and the beast. Yeah. The beast looks like the dragon. Yeah. I mean, with the numbers of heads and the numbers of crowns and mm -hmm. numbers mm -hmm. of horns. So, uh, apparently, I think what I can guess, that's a guess, that the, the, the devil, Satan, has different characters or different uh, um, uh, heads, that's what he's saying. And these heads will be represented in his work in, on earth. He is going to work his powers, his characters, through the, uh, the, the beast that he's going to raise from the sea. And that will come to So there, there is going to be the characters of Satan. When Jesus talks to the Jews, he says to them, why do you want to kill me? I showed you the things what I saw at my father's. You show me the things that you saw with your father. Go to John. So you know that there is this whatever, and it's a, it's a deeper, a deeper concept in a way. The beast is from the sea. Uh huh. When I, when I hear that, I think of the Romans. Oh. The yeah, Romans. That's where my head is, you know. Romans, way, yes. way, way back then, you know. But they were from the sea. Sure. That's, that's what most of the commentators would do, the historical commentation, comment, commentary. So look at this. Uh, verse, chapter 5 in St. John. Verse 19, what chapter are five from St. John's Gospel. Oh. So this talks about how, what we, what, what, what we see dictates what we do. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. It talks about raising the dead. Um, um, let's see that. He says, I do what I see with my father, and you do what you do, what you see with your father. Did we reach a consensus on what the woman was? It is the church. Okay. Church and St. Mary can say that, because it's, it's not really one or the other. St. Mary in certain aspects. Yeah. Did you ever see Barker's commentary on this? She, she draws an equivalence between uh, Sophia and the wisdom wisdom yeah and she says in the temple you know there there was another deity a female deity and, and the church took it and basically personified it as mary mm. so i don't know she's pretty smart but she uh but i was thinking yeah this sounds like the church yeah that sometimes when people study something they try to throw everything into it yeah i i, I got that yeah i got that is it john 8 44 a woman it could be eight yes <clears throat> so when it says the woman is persecuted we're talking about the uh, the church definitely okay Land. and switch which verse 844 44 42, 44. 42. yes that's what he's saying so uh, this is a verse that talks about what does the devil do in people and how he does it uh, in verse 43 he says why do you not understand my speech chapter 8 John 8 43 
Why do you not understand my speech because you are not able to listen to my word? You are of your father, the devil. So he's saying, because of the, because of the devil work in you, and that you belong to him, you, you are able to listen to me, because the devil cannot listen to God. So that's what he's saying. The devil cannot listen to God, and he is working in you, make you unable to listen to me. Mm -hmm. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why don't you know? You do not believe me. He who is of God hears God's word. Therefore, you do not hear, because you are not of God. So, um, <coughs> he keeps saying that over and over again. He says, "I saw with my father." things and I'm doing it, like the first verse. And you see things with your father and you're doing it. So apparently, this is saying what the religion is saying, that the devil would do something in the world that represents him. It would look like him metaphorically. So you want to see what the devil is like? Look at the world. Look at the systems of the world, how, where they're going and how they do things. Then you can have a glimpse of what the devil is like. You can look at that creation, and you can have a glimpse of what God is like. That's what Saint Athanasius said. And of course, they stoned him because they both are calling God their father, but he's saying, "Well, your father is the father of lies. He's not making any friends." No, he's not. <laughs> because he said you. Uh, the, he said he said that he is a, of demons. So he said, if I say that, I will be a liar. I can't agree with you. I cannot. He says, uh, your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. <laughs> and okay, so that's the point we want to make is that when, when, when the devil takes servants, he turned them to be, be like him. <clears throat> that he says he was a murderer. So apparently the first person the devil kind of took for a student was Cain. Okay. He took him in. And he kind of uh, apprenticed. We're in devil school here. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that is that is revelation. So when you talk about uh, you talk about the dragon, what kind of beast he will bring out? <coughs> A dragonish beast coming out of the sea. In chapter twelve. Um, so a, a great fiery red dragon. Fiery red. Uh, red is a color of uh, blood, rage, great rage, not anger. He's so vehemently angry. Uh, having seven heads and ten horns. And the number seven belongs to God as a covenant. The devil wants to have it to have his own covenant. And ten horns means perfect power. Uh -huh. That's all the power. And seven crowns. And seven crowns on his head. So that's like seven rulers? Seven, but not, not in the dragon himself. He is destined to make seven rulers as a number, as a potential. So there is a potential in him, in his head, that he's going to make seven rules. But then when he makes the beast, he would have seven heads with seven rulers. Now his tail, he has a tail, drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. What are the stars of heaven? The stars of, the stars of heaven are the angels of God. <laughs> Yeah, C.S. Lewis and uh, Tolkien, they did a lot of work on the stars. And the, the, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is a beautiful thing, he brings in the stars and he says that some of the stars retired in islands in Narnia. And now they rule our islands. So when the, when the kids go to visit, they say, who are you, Kuryak? And he says, I am a retired star. 
So it means like they are angels in a disciplined time. They are they have done something. So they ask, what did you do that you get you know kind of uh, retired from your work? He says it's not for you to know what the, what the mistakes of angels are. So the stars of heaven here are angels. In the Jewish tradition, when the, when Satan fell, mm -hmm. he took with him one third of the angels of heaven. Oh, that, that's they, a good they became connection. his army. That's a good connection. Mm -hmm. Became his army. That was my question. Are they good angels or bad angels? Now they are not good angels. So he got them with the tail. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, it's a dragon. He has a tail. Yes, he has a tail, but why that not that by the head? Took them down. So the more they can down. scoop the most with the he's, tail. But he down. has no power over them. So most most probably it's like a scorpion. You know, the tail is a, the venomous, mm -hmm. the deadly. Mm -hmm. He's not confronting them. He's doing it very sneakily, very poisonous. So uh, he, he uh, what's the word, one of deceived. Deceived the angels, if that can be said. Um, and he drew drew third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Now they become, um, in a way, demons. And the dragon stood before the woman. Now the dragon take, took a stand against the woman. <coughs> what does that mean? So we said the woman is a church, and it's the disciples waiting for Christ to go to the cross and be resurrected. What is the devil going to do? This is war, baby. That is war. <laughs> yes. He knows. <laughs> See, this is where I understand things, how it, is, how it went in, in the mind of Christ and in the, in, in the mind of the Bible. That Jesus going to, and this is what, uh, what's his name in, in the Passion of the Christ? Mel Gibson had tried to portray, there is an enemy. It is not human. There is an enemy that in, that actually is turning everything against Christ. He's, this is the big clash. This is the big confrontation now, right? That it's either him or me. We cannot let this go. So this man has to be killed and has to be disgraced, get rid of him by all means, because that's very dangerous. This group of people will have very big power over me if this person succeeds. So let's get rid of him. So you hear the words almost in the cross scene when they tell him, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Who else said that? And when? The temptation. Of the temptation? It's a temptation. It was a spiritual being who told this to Jesus on the mountain. Come down, you are the Son of God. Exactly. Bread. Yes. So he's starting to stir up the people to do to talk to the to them and talk to Christ through them, and then Mel Gibson put it in that very uh, very interesting scene with the woman carrying the baby, and mm -hmm. he asked him why you have a baby or that ugly baby. He said it's almost like it's challenging Saint Mary. He's challenging the church. I'm gonna have a product here now. Your product is gonna die. So he wanted to devour the child as soon as it was born. Whatever happens after this cross, I'm not gonna let it. Pass. So she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Immediately after the resurrection, Jesus goes to say Mary, uh, to Mary Magdalene and tell her, Don't touch me, for I have not ascended to my father, but I, I tell my brethren I'm going to my father and their father. I'm ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. So after the resurrection comes the ascension. So Jesus is not going to be left in the world anymore. He's not going to be exposed to any more clashing with the devil. But who's going to be le left to expose to be exposed to the clash? The church. church. The church. Yeah. That's why he was not. You know, he didn't. I would have imagined if I were in his place, I would have paid a visit to Caiaphas. Just say good morning. <laughs> You know, enjoy the breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> or to pilot. I think they would be shaking. They will they will die if they see him. Be out of their mind totally. But he chose not to. I mean in, in my place I would have done it. 
just to see what happens, it would be very exciting. <laughs> but he was told not to clash, let the, the dragon alone, let him be. And we'll take care of the church. So he goes to the father and says, but what about the church? And the father says, I'll take care of the church. Uh, so he is supposedly to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Which is that? Which 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 reference is that? Again, let your uh, uh, deja vu center kind of be active. Where is that coming from? Psalms. Psalms. Which psalm? Eighteen. Two. I think it's Psalm two. Let's go to Psalm two. I love that song because it has a lot of things to say about Jesus, especially about the resurrection. Especially about the resurrection. Why do the nations rage, and the people meditate on vain things? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers gather together. And uh, St. Peter would say that Herod and Pilate were in, un in unison against Jesus. He said they, they gathered, the, the, the gospel specifically said from that day, Herod and Pilate were in, the, in disagreement after the, the Jesus account with uh, the cross, they became friends again. And the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Anointed in the Hebrew is Mashiach, Messiah, Christ. Saying, let us break their bands and cast away their yokes from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh at them. The Lord shall mock them. Then he shall, shall he speak to them in his wrath and trouble them in his anger. But I was established that he speaks on the Messiah's now, as king by him, by the Father, over his holy hell of Zion, declaring the Lord's decree, the Lord said to me, listen to this, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Yeah. What is he talking about? Yeah. That is the resurrection, mm -hmm. after the cross. That's what St. Paul is going to use. We got this from Acts 13, when St. Paul says that he raised for us his son, from the dead, as it is written in Psalm 2, Today I have begotten you, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you. The nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your position. You shall shepherd them with an iron staff. What does iron staff mean? Authority. Uh, why not gold? Gold is soft. Exactly. So iron means... Business. Exactly. There is no bending. There is no bending. What he says, it goes. There is no bending in his orders. You shall shepherd them with iron staff. You shall shatter them like a potter's or a vessel. And now, O kings, understand. Be instructed, all you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. Rejoice in him with trembling. Lay hold of him in the instruction, lest the Lord be angry and you perish from the righteous way, when his fury shall be quickly kindled, blessed are those all who trust in him. There's a verse here in Hebrew, I, I have it now, it's a Septuagint. It says, kiss the sun. You had that? Mm -hmm. Kiss the sun. Which means you have to love the sun, to be intimate with the sun. This is the way that the nations mm -hmm. will be able to be please, pleasing to God. The it father. says, kiss the son, lest he this be angry anger, exactly. and perish in the way. All right. Lay hold of his instruction. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is the talk about uh, the woman giving child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Again, the theme, the, theme, the theme of this whole business is the resurrection. So, yeah, a, a, a Jew could say this applies to any uh, messianic figure. Right? It could apply to David. It could apply to anyone who is the anointed one. Right? Except for a few exceptions that have to be stretched very far. That the David never was given rule over nations. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Right? The, uh, David wrote this about his son. 
He was thinking that Solomon would be the one. Solomon would be the one to rule over nations, and Solomon tried very hard to impress the nations, but not not really. You know, he got people visiting, the, you know, admiring Solomon's ways and stuff, but he ended up being a slave yeah. to nations, yeah. gods. So the real person that was a child of God, he understood this. Even the rabbinic teaching says it is about the Messiah, the Son of David, who will come, even if they didn't believe that Jesus is. Right. So you have all of these these kings that can save people, but then they they are all a bunch of disappointments. But he's coming. Exactly. That's what they would say always. Right. And the hope of Israel. Um, so this is the male child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and his child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, and the wilderness here is a metaphor of, um, you know, what is it, a metaphor, where is the image? Again, think images. If I can manage to get you to think in images rather than in, in ideas, that would be wonderful. Where is the church, whenever the church was, Delivered by taking her out to a wilderness. Saint John the Baptist. Saint John, yeah, that's the first thing that God said. Now talking about the whole church. This Sinai or that Sinai? Exactly. Yeah. That, say oh, that again. Yeah. He's taking us into the desert. Yes. Yeah, that's where he's at, right? Yes. Now. When does the, when did the church go into a desert, running away from a killer, oh, uh, from somebody uh, who uh, wanted Moses. to kill Exodus. all the males, Exodus. right? Exodus. Who killed all the males and subdued Israel? So this is the image of the church running into the wilderness. Again, it's almost like a second exodus. Okay? And where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. What do you think of that? Yeah. So how we can think of this? What is the fulfillment of this? I think it is Acts 8. So what happens after Stephen got murdered by the Jews? A persecution started to rise, and especially when Herod, the, the Herod that was in the time of uh, the apostles, he stretched his hand and took James, the, the brother of John, and killed him with the sword. And he found that this is pleasing to the Jews. Oh, let's do it again. <laughs> you know, like a child says, he makes something that the, the parents are excited about. He says, let's do it again. So he wanted to get somebody else. He said, this time I'm going to do a... A grand, a grander one. Let's get Peter. And he puts him in prison. And when he puts Peter in prison, the angel comes and takes Peter out of the prison. And uh, Herod kills the soldiers. But then the church started to get out of Judea. Judea altogether. Why? He said, this is going to be tough. Let's get out of here. So the church gets out from Jerusalem and Judea. And they start going to Antioch and have those five churches that started that church in all nations. So the wilderness here is the place outside Jerusalem. Egypt. Yeah, the, the, Jerusalem. He already Egypt. called it Jerusalem. Yes. Egypt. Yes. Yeah. He already called it Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And before he says that the place where our Lord was crucified also, he called it Sodom. Then he called it Egypt. Mm -hmm. Egypt and Sodom where our Lord was crucified also. It's just too hard for John to say it is Jerusalem. It's a very dear name. So this is where the beginning of the persecution, where she has a place prepared for God. So we know the place is prepared by God. It is Antioch, Rome, believe it or not, <coughs> Alexandria, yes. and Constantinople, out of Jerusalem. And you got the five churches, the five initial churches. So you start by uh, Jerusalem, then out of Jerusalem they go. The first hop after Jerusalem is Antioch, where they call the disciples Christians. What about Ephesus? You know, Paul was preaching up there. Mm -hmm. Right, but it was not the hub, not the big hub, not the center where you have this throne, the throne, the, the sea. Yeah, there was Ephesus. The council of God again? Oh, so he was going up and down. Yeah. Would I be, if, God forbid, if somebody kills the son of the king, but the, the son manages to escape the killing, let's say not resurrected, and carries wounds, you think the killer would be able to go in to the palace again? I never thought about that one. <laughs> this is like crazy. This is crazy. He cannot. 
the, the, the angels say, you dare, you dare come here again? You killed his son and you dare come here? Okay. And he's, and he's just like, he says, no, this is my place, this is my right. No right. And then uh, they, they kick him out because Jesus took his place. Is it? I think of it sometimes this way. The devil had no real crime until he killed Jesus. He didn't really have any real crime. Because humans in their weakness and their frailty, okay, just humans, so what? They would have done it on their own. And they did it by their own choice. They did sin by their free will, right? Nobody forced them. The devil didn't twist their arms no. and told them eat. Huh. Right? Yeah, this they made a choice. This is like a movie. This is like the movie you're making. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, they're, they're people. They, yeah. They might be just, but by their free will, they chose yeah, to eat. Will. But he did not chose to do anything. He was a loyal son, right? Mm. But he was killed. And he agreed to die. Why? Why was he killed? What, where is the fairness? Where is justice here? Mm. There is no free will in this. That's why I think that's why I think the devil was taken by this. It was his snare in a way. Uh, so war broke in heaven. Michael, by the way, the devil says uh, in Isaiah, go to Isaiah, the devil says something, always saying it. It's almost like written on his forehead in Isaiah. Isaiah tell me. He says, I will put my throne above the throne of the Most High. Which Isaiah is that? Talks about the king of Babylon. Isaiah 14, yes. Uh, this is 12, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, who rose up in the morning. He who sins for all the nations is crushed to the earth. For you said in your mind, I will ascend into heaven. I will place my throne above the stars of heaven. I will sit, stars of heaven means... Again, angels. angels. He wants to be above everybody. I will sit on a lofty mountain, on the lofty mountains toward the north. I will ascend above the clouds. I will be like the Most High. <coughs> this is a very interesting statement. I will be like the Most High. Yeah. Guess what Michael means? Michael. Who, who is like the Most like High? Like God. Who is like God? Yeah. It's, a, it's a rhetoric question. Who is like God? So Satan says, I will be like God. And Michael says, no one that's why it had to be Michael who fights. So this is the, the contrast between the two. The names carry, carry the, the function in a way. He's defending God's glory. But now you shall descend to Hades, to the foundations of the earth. That's where the Jews think Hades is. It is not somewhere in the space. Jewish tradition, and this is Isaiah also, it is in the center of the earth. Somewhere in the center of the earth, there is the lockup of souls. And the other uh, <coughs> way of thinking about it is Sheol, or the pet, where the Greek would say it's the underworld, the netherland. Those who see you will marvel at you, and they will say, this is the man who greatly upset the earth, who shook kingdoms, who made all the inhabited world a desert, he destroyed its cities and did not set free those in captivity. All the kings of the nations sleep in honor, every man in his house. But you shall be cast forth on the mountains like a loathsome, a loathsome dead person with many dead, pierced with swords who go down into Hades. As a garment defiled in blood, you will not be clean. So you will not be clean because you destroyed my land and killed my people. You and evil seed will not endure forever. Okay. 
It is a mix. I think he's talking about the king of Babylon too. All right. So that's that. That's the the meaning of the fight. I am. I will be like the Most High. And Michael says, "Who is going? Who, who is like God?" Um, that Isaiah seeing that. Where was he? In twelve. Is Isaiah sees um, that uh, image ah, of yeah. Lucifer. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So and the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. By did not by the but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. There is um, an image of Satan falling that is not just Isaiah as a prophecy. Also in Luke 10, 18, Jesus spoke about the devil starting to fight the, the church. Um, first, Jesus sees in, in, in Luke uh, 10, 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by me, by me, by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. So that evil spirit that he threw to the ground is now being defeated. His powers are being weakened. And he started to fall. But there's another place where Jesus says to, the, to Peter, Peter, Peter. Satan has requested you to be sifted like wheat. So there is a request made by Satan that give me the disciples, I'll show you how strong they are. And he said, be careful now because Satan wants them specifically. So he's not paying attention to this. He went to the house of the high priest and he denied it. Jesus. Well, he's the head, isn't he? I mean, outside of James? Yes, he is. So there's that request that Satan is starting to challenge the woman. And that's that's where he started to challenge the woman by requesting the disciples to be sifted like we. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And I want to end with this because it's, it's going to take a, maybe a refreshment next time. Is the kingdom of God started immediately when Jesus sat on the throne in heaven. Actually, by him going up the cross, he prepared for that, that, that beginning of it. Why? I would leave you to think about this. So by saying, now salvation, strength, and kingdom of our God. So what was the kingdom before? Whose kingdom it was? <coughs> that was well, I need to give it a set up here. Yeah. Satan? Okay. I mean, it before him? Really? That's, he's saying the text is implying that God was not sovereign before. <coughs> if he was sovereign, it would be his kingdom. Uh, St. Paul would say it was a preparation time for the kingdom. He was sovereign, but exercising the sovereignty in, in preparation, not an actual domain. I want to say that one more time. Sorry, Liz. Uh, let me go, I will, I will tell you exactly what I mean by, so they say, he say now, mm. now, salvation and strength and the kingdom because the devil went down from heaven. So what was going on before now? Because they say now, when Jesus was given a throne in heaven and he says, today I have begotten you, ask me, I will give you nations. When we think about it, it's a beautiful song, it's very emotional, but actually what happened? There's something that happened. As I said, 
by Jesus sitting on the throne next to uh, his father, and he said, uh, Saint Stephen would say, I see him on the right side of the majesty in heaven. Sat, and we say it in the creed, and he sat on the right hand of his father. That means he's approved. He's approved. He is the king. Not yes. on the left, but on the right. Yes. He's, he's the king now. He has dominion. St. Paul's going to say something. We have five minutes. So we'll just do this and get done with it. Because we're going to stop here. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel has something to say about this. Daniel. Chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Xerxes, of the seed of the Medes, who reigned over the kingdom of Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood in the books the number of years when the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet would be fulfilled for the desolation of Jerusalem, and it came to 70 years. Jeremiah said, There will be 70 years, you're out of Jerusalem. You have to be out for 70 years. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to seek him in prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. I said, O Lord God, great and marvelous, who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and keep your commandments. We sinned and did wrong and actually acted lawlessly. So he goes to, to pray this long prayer. It's a very uh, penitential prayer. Now, in verse 20, Now, while I was still speaking in his prayer, praying and declaring my sins and the sins of my people, Israel, and bringing my cry for mercy before the Lord my God concerning the holy mountain of God, my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, then the man Gabriel, whom I saw in my vision at the beginning, flew and touched me about the time of the evening sacrifice. There is a morning sacrifice and evening sacrifice. So he was praying at the evening sacrifice. He caused me to understand and spoke with me and said, O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to guide you with insight. At the beginning of your prayer, it took him 21 days fasting. The word went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are a man of desires. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. 70 weeks, and he's explaining to him. Um, I wonder... Where is it? Maybe this is the second one. We have so many years of desolation. No, I wonder, but now we're in 70 yeah, 21 weeks. 21 days. That's what I'm looking for. I'm sorry. 21 days. Uh, can you find it? It's the first vision. I'm not sure what it is. It's seven, maybe? <clears throat> 21 days, verse 13. In which chapter? Chapter 10, 13. 10? Mm -hmm. So he was praying, fasting for 21 days before Daniel comes to him, before uh, Gabriel. <coughs> Yeah, here it is. Right. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and to afflict yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I came because of your words. But the prince of the Persian kingdom withstood me 21 days. There's your connection there. Yeah. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So what is that? Who is the prince? Okay, Gabriel is a, an archangel. Yeah, what do the words mean? Mike, 
El, Michael, and but Gabriel. Who is like, who is like God? And what about Gabriel? Gabriel, I don't know. Uh, but the uh, prince of the Persian kingdom. Who is the prince of the Persian? Because actually Daniel lives in Persia at that time. Mm -hmm. He lives in Persia, inside that country. Who is the prince of Persia that can stand an angel? Can hold an angel up? <laughs> you know, he has a gun. <laughs> he says, you, you stop where you are or else I will shoot. Who can do that? It has to be a devil. So that, that, that implies that all these kingdoms were ruled by, ruled by devils. That's where they came down to earth to rule them. So if you want the gospel to go into, you have to take the head up. Cancel the head, all these dominions will be out. Because they have a place up in heaven that the Satan, the, the, the head serpent, is up holding a high place. They can still maintain their places. You get that head out, then these will lose their places. So Daniel is saying, we cannot preach anything to these kings. They will not change. Nobody will listen to us because they are the kind of ruled by devils. Jesus is saying that to the Jews. He says, even you now are ruled by a devil. It's not until I go to the cross and knock your father off his place, then you'll be free to listen to me. That is the point. By Adam giving up his dominion, by listening to the serpent, he gave the whole earth. He just gave it. Because God told Adam, take dominion over the earth. And so evil was present with God in heaven. Absolutely. They had a, because he fell, but God, he didn't do anything yet worthy of him being out. So there has to be some kind of crime the devil would do that would knock him off this place. And that crime had to be the killing of the son. There is not, no other crime who had done nothing worthy of death. <clears throat> so this is one. This is one. So that's why they shout in heaven when Jesus comes to the throne. They say, now the dominion and the kingdom of our God. Now. Yes, because the place is vacant. Now Jesus takes up the place. He's given rule. He's given the iron rod. Now you can do whatever you want in the, in the nations. Then Jesus comes back to the disciples and says, go to all nations. You have an access. I can send you. Go. Now go to <coughs> St. Paul and Ephesians. I will finish by Ephesians. He says the same thing. I think he knows and he talks about the same item. St. Paul and Ephesians. raised you up and set you up. Now I want you to read with me chapter 3. Uh, let me go. Um, let's go to chapter 2 first. Verse 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches of his grace and his king kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Go to uh, verse um, Chapter 3. <coughs> he says, this is the secret. The secret that I want to tell you. Um, that nobody knew about it before. 
in other ages in chapter 3 verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. That's the secret. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace. The Gentiles has a share. Um, go to verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to, known to who? Who would know about the church and what, it, what its glory? To the principalities and powers in heavenly places. That the church has a very glorious place. The church sits on the right side of Christ, by Christ sitting. Um, go to... When you see uh, principalities and powers, is that a neutral? Is that neutral? In other words, it's just power and dominion, mm -hmm. but not necessarily good or bad? It could be. Yes, it doesn't say it is good or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a place where I want to say, and he sat us up in heaven. He sat him up in heaven on the account of the church. So the church is actually who is sitting up in heaven, not Christ. Um, he's sitting there not just for himself. I'm trying to find that one. Um, It is in chapter 1, actually. I missed it. Blessed be in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Um, <clears throat> Verse 20, which he worked in Christ. He says in 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. What is St. Paul saying? He says that Jesus' work was actually the church's work. That, you know that, that image of the woman in labor? It is almost one in their actions. So whatever the child does belongs to the woman, to the mother. So is he saying that Jesus' resurrection seated him at the right side of his glory, not for himself, but for the church. By doing that, the church has the upper hand. Then she has access to all the world. Then knocking off Satan and all these actions is based on this victory. So the church has no resistance. The church in the old times had a lot of resistance. You couldn't speak to anybody. You couldn't tell anybody about God. <clears throat> They're persecuted, weakened, always under pressure, always in slavery. But then once Christ is risen, he says, every power is given to me. And he links every power is given to me. Go and preach the word. This too has one 
the 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 power given to Christ and the preaching of the gospel means there's no now there's no closed doors you're gonna be you have you're gonna have persecution you're gonna be killed but you will have listeners people hearts will be open so St. Paul goes and talks to Athens people come goes into Ephesians they will come there's Christ finding believers everywhere the apostles go in Egypt and in, in Europe and Asia and you know you name it before that it was impossible and the reason why because of the dominion of Satan over the world the Israelites never really shared God with anyone they were just given the message and they were separated because they felt there was no way there was no way there is uh, a lot of uh, you remember how when uh, Moses went to Egypt and he threw his staff. What happened? He threw his staff on the ground. It became a serpent. Then what happened? You mean the other magician? The other magician threw their staffs yeah. and became serpents. What does it one say? One ate the other one. We have the power yeah. too. Right? Yes. You, you, and who gave them that power? Of course. The devil had a lot of powers. And people believed in the powers of the devil. They believed in it. He didn't really want to give it up. Okay.